right. J. Aaron Seabee with FightHype.com, here with Matchroom CEO, Frank Smith. Frank, what's going on? We're good. Just landed. New York. New day. Bit tired. It's about midnight. It's about 10 p.m. back at home. You guys are always tired, man. Always tired. Rip, ripping and running. We're not tired. We just, we just like traveling. I love traveling. We just love, we just love getting on an airplane every couple of days. Where you guys come from? London. London. We had, a, had the press tour last week, so we've had a couple of days back home. Now back to it. So it's a big show this weekend. What would you think of that whole Chisora hoopla? It's hilarious, isn't it? He, you know, like he divides opinions and he's all over, like everyone's talking about it, everyone. He's all over Twitter, he's all over YouTube, he's everywhere. He does what, you know, he's always been good at it. But he's, uh, he's scary when he goes like that. Very scary. And I was, I was, <laughs> I was, I was thinking, was it was it Eddie boxing you at the matchroom offices? Yes, that was me. So so Eddie Eddie's got some moves, you know. He's got some skills. He's got some size. It was less boxing, more like bullying, on like chubby, small guy. Right. Well, well, my thing is, is that if 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 Chizor tossed the table and ran towards Eddie, what do you think Eddie's gonna do in that situation? You think he's gonna? Like, <laughs> you think he's gonna try to maybe land one, grab his legs? You wouldn't, though, would you? I think you. I think you got to. You got no choice, though. I think you got to try, right? I think you've just got to sort of go in the floor like that on the floor and just hope he can't kick you off. Hey, you wouldn't do that. Chisora is that. I love Chisora. David Allen said in a street fight, top top three. It'd be. I don't know who his top two are, but top three would be. It'd be Chisora, in terms of in terms of toughness, in terms of a street fight. What do you, what do you say about that? Hey, you going? Chisora. Chisora all day. He's in there. Have you have you ever heard of anything in the streets happening no. with him? Any 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 craziness? No, not me. I'm no. What um, so it seems like lately, everything that Matchroom is doing is causing a little controversy. It's causing a little. What, what, what's your what's your take on? Do you do you like that as the, as a CEO? Is is all press good press? Like what's how do you feel about that? Yeah, look, we're, we're trying to do new things. We're trying to make a change in this sport, make a sport bigger and bigger. Um, and, you know, everyone, not everyone's going to be a fan of everything you do. And I think you mentioned there's a few things. The YouTube fight, for example. My sort of thought process on it is they are like the biggest, some of the biggest stars around. Right. Like celebrity stars. You know, for whatever reason, they've obviously, you know, they've, they've created this this business and what they've done on YouTube and they've done very very well for themselves and they've got a huge following and I think even if you can take 1%, 5%, 10%, whatever the number is at, away from their audience and bring them into boxing and keep them in the sport boxing, isn't that good to bring in a whole new audience that weren't interested? I, I would say so, I would say so, I, I mean I've got some younger cousins and nephews uh, that don't know anything about boxing and don't care to know anything about boxing, but they know KSI and Logan Paul, so. And the opportunity, you know, for the guys we're gonna put on the card as well, who, you know, pros, who we want to build, and if they can gain 10, 15% of that audience, I think that's amazing. Right. right? And, that's, and that's the aim. And, you know, they will get into a new audience that we maybe haven't done in the past. I think it's brilliant for the sport. Like, you know, all the, all the sort of, fans who are like, this isn't the right thing to do. You can't win. Like, they want what they want, you know, and you can't always win. So they, look, they've got, they have a right to have an opinion, but I think we obviously feel that it's the right thing to do to carry on building. Now, I, I would imagine that you don't want Matchroom to be like the place to go for these kinds of um, you know, uh, like sideshow events or whatever, but if another thing were to come up, you know, another two YouTubers that were just as popular and this one does well, would you be willing to maybe do that again? Something like I think that? He's got to make, I think they've got like, these two guys actually were quite, if you watch the first fight, they were better than some fighters you see on the show anyway. So like, you know, I think it depends. If they get in there and they're like, they look like me and Eddie. Right, right, right. Then no. If there's a competition there, and they're actually interested in doing it properly, interested in having a 12, 14 week training camp, taking it seriously, turning pro. Right. I think it's, you know, like everyone's got a right to do it. And you don't have to watch. Like if you really are against it, you don't have to watch. But a lot of people will be tuning in, and a lot of people will be very interested in this. So, you know, 
think again, if, if it makes sense and it's right, and it you know, we believe. Yeah, do you know what these guys actually? They're not bad. I'm not saying they're gonna. They did uh, Mayweather against McGregor. McGregor had never had a fight before, right. but that was acceptable because because it made a lot of money. This at least is going to be competitive. Right. And I, I think people like would rather see a competitive fight than just than just a whitewash. Right? Um, going back to Jazora, he, he made a comment that Joshua didn't want the fight in, in Saudi Arabia, that Eddie Hearn wanted the fight to be to be in. That, in other words, the fight's happening there because Eddie Hearn wanted it there. Do you think that that's is there any truth to that comment, or where, where would he get that from? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. You know, Joshua is involved in every decision that's made with his career. He makes the choices. Um, He's very much looking forward to this new opportunity to go to Saudi Arabia, experience a new culture, experience a new place, and you know, do something completely different. He sold out Wembley Stadium, he sold out Cardiff, he sold out MSG. This is completely different. And he's, he's very much, he's enjoying it. They both, and Ruiz as well, they had a great time at the press tour while we were there in Saudi last week. And it looks after so well. And I think this is going to be an event that people look back on in 50 years and go, bloody hell, do you remember when they did that? In the, in the desert, basically, you know, built, they built this arena out of nothing. Right. So, no, Joshua, 100% behind this. From a, from a financial aspect of like, you know, for, for UK fans that might have been making the trip to the garden to come see that fight, um, how, how comparable in terms? How much more expensive is it going to be, or the opposite way, from New York to, to go over the, to that to uh, to Saudi? How much more expensive would it be uh, for your average person that's looking to make their way out there? To be honest, it's all quite you know flight prices, hotel prices. It's not much different to be honest. Whether you're doing it in the UK, in the in the US for UK fans flying over, you know right. wherever you you're planning to do. It. And and uh, they want to build. They want to bring a huge audience over across this, not just. It's important for them to build the sport in Saudi and for the local fans, but they also want to bring a huge travelling sport over. So you know, they're going to make it accessible. You, you buy a ticket and you get your visa with your ticket. And flight prices, you know, we booked a lot of flights, hotels, they're not, they're not over the top. They're all very accessible, accessible for people. Is there any chance that, you know, I've obviously got a dog in the fight, I'm a New York media guy, is there any chance that we get to see AJ tip a, dip a uh, toe back over here in, in the garden or, or somewhere in New York, somewhere in this area? Yeah, in the future, look, it's definitely, he loved, again, he loved it in the US as well, he loved boxing it. That's definitely an opportunity that will rise in the future. You know? The Ruiz fight is the biggest fight in world boxing. Anthony Joshua is already probably up there, if not number one number two as the biggest star in world boxing. Right. If he beats Ruiz, which we believe he will, it catapults him to a whole other level on a global scale. This is the biggest fight out there. Um, and you know, yeah, the opportunities will come out for sure to come back to the US in the future. Do you, do you get nervous like on, on the night of that fight when that like uh, you just said, it, it's going to be the biggest fight of AJ's career. I'm sure there's a lot riding on that. Like, do you physically feel nervous, AJ walking to the ring that night? I, I've known AJ, I think, since 2013 now, or 2012, 2013, we signed him to and had a great relationship with him. So, obviously, if you spend a lot of time with people, you, you have a closer sort of connection with them. You know, a, a lot of our fighters we have that with. Right. Some, you know, when you just sign them off, you, you spend a lot of time with throughout their career. You do have those that feeling of, you know, nerves. Sometimes you're very confident that they're going to do it. Other times, there's other occasions where you're like, there's a lot riding on this. But, you know, he, he's the one who believes in himself more than anyone else out there. So we all believe he's going to go out there and do it. Of course, it's, there are nerves. They're always up. Um, but we're not the ones getting in the ring. Well, Frank, thanks a lot, as always. Thank you. Thanks for having me.